I told a friend of ours, um, Nina Walford, who's here tonight, her, her sister, that we were moving to Johannesburg from Moscow. Um, she said to me, don't you have to know something about the places that they send you to cover? And I said, no, we're journalists. <laughs> and sometimes, in fact, luck is enough. Working in 2006 um, on a series with Michael about children in Africa, I connected with um, a school district official named George who uh, was, lived in a village uh, in the western um, African country of Ghana and he told me that, if, that on the lake there were hundreds, perhaps thousands of children who were enslaved by the fishermen there and if I came up there he would help me find some of them. So uh, this was a gamble because the lake, Lake Volta is 3,000 square miles. I was, his village was very far from the capital of Ghana and I wasn't sure if I got there um, I could find the children if they indeed existed but sure he sounded very convincing so I went and sure enough at 4.30 in the morning in my rented boat, from my rented boat, I could see many small wooden fishing boats and in the middle of the boats I could see small children who were hauling, who were bailing water and hauling nets. And George told me that when the nets became entangled, the children would have to dive down uh, to the bottom of the lake, disentangle them, and that some of them drowned. So we, somehow we managed to convince one of these fishermen, Mr. Tacky, um, to let us watch his operation for a couple of days. His uh, crew of little children worked seven days a week, 14 hours a day. They ate twice a day. They had very few clothes. Some of them didn't even have pants. They, the rest, what, what constituted rest was mending the nets, and sometimes they were beaten. Mr. Tacky explained that he had to beat them sometimes because they were tr troublesome and that he himself had been beaten when he was learning the profession as a young child. Um, he, uh, he agreed to let us go out with the youngest charge, Mark, who was six. Um, you can show. Mark, uh, Mark weighed about 30 pounds. Uh, he couldn't swim. And he was ter too terrified to say very much, but he whispered to me that he did not like Mr. Tacky. Um, here's a photo of Mark in the boat working uh, with Mr. Tacky behind him. There's a back story to this photo. Uh, the, the night before, uh, the photographer and I had a very heated debate about how we could get the photo of Mark uh, which we, who was clearly going to be the centerpiece of the story, um, without and, and yet protect him. And the photographer was very much against a life jacket. He said uh, the life jacket would wreck the photo, it would distort the truth. We were not actors in the situation, we were observers. And I, I, was, I, I, I understood all that, um, but I was worried about what would happen if the boat turned over. And if nothing, separate and apart from our not inconsiderable moral responsibility, I could see a headline. Two New York Times journalists lure six-year-old who can't swim out into lake. Boat turns over, child dies. You know, journalists are looking for journalism prize, killed child. So we agreed finally to compromise. You can't see it in this photo because the photographer and I are at the other end, but we brought a life jacket and we made a pact that if the boat turned over, we would together save Mark. Uh, I, went, I drove for um, two, two days. I found Mark's aunt in his home village. Uh, she explained that his parents had sold five of their children because they didn't have enough money to eat. I found another woman who'd sold a child to Mr. Taki. She said in four years she'd gotten $66, and that was all she had to live on. The story, when the story ran, uh, the boat photo was at the top of the front page, um, and Oprah sent one of her own reporters to retrace my steps. And I remember that in that hour-long show, the reporter said, and at the end of this isolated road, I've discovered the shocking truth. And this is sort of standard for journalism, uh, but my kids were a little shocked by that. They were, she discovered the shocking truth? She did? <laughs> anyway, an American charity also got involved. They managed to rescue about 20 of the children. Essentially, they bought their freedom. 
They got them to a good orphanage. Here's a recent photo of Mark. He's now 15. He's in high school. Oh, yeah. Only. Only about half of the kids in Ghana go to high school, so he's doing very well. Uh, but many children are still enslaved on that lake. The estimates are still in the thousands.